assignment sheet. Hopefully that's what it says. And mid-segment theorem. Awesome. So today we're learning about two theorems that aren't necessarily within a triangle. The mid-segment theorem does deal with the triangle, but angle bisector theorem and perpendicular bisector theorem, just the original theorems, don't have to be in a triangle. Now what we're looking at here is going to be when we do have a triangle and we draw these in, what happens? So in two classes, we're going to dive into the details of what happens when we're in a triangle with it. So first, just with our vocab here, so perpendicular bisector, same thing that we talked about at the beginning of the year. It has to cut the side in half, thus the bisecting. It has to be perpendicular, thus the perpendicular. Its only two requirements is that it is perpendicular and bisects. Now, sometimes it might go through the op in a triangle. Sometimes it might go through the opposite angle. If it does, it doesn't necessarily mean that it cuts it in half. It might, depending upon the triangle it might, but it does not have to. Its only requirement is that it's perpendicular and that it bisects. Now an angle bisector, its only requirement is that it bisects the angle. Again, in a triangle, if you were to extend that out, it'll cross um, across the other side. This doesn't necessarily mean that it cuts it in half. It might, but it does not have to. Its only requirement is that it cuts the angle in half. Right, John Michael? Yeah. I'm good, aren't I? Thank you. All right, median. Median's one that we haven't talked about before. So median connects vertex and midpoint of the side opposite. Now, our median's only requirement is to connect vertex and side opposite at the midpoint. It does not necessarily cut that angle in half. Again, it could, but it does not have to. It only has to hit midpoint and vertex. Altitude goes from vertex to the side opposite in such a way that it's perpendicular. Again, those are the only requirements for it. It does not have to cut the angle in half, does not have to cut the side in half. It just simply has to connect vertex and side opposite in such a way that it's perpendicular. Now, our definition here, what the book says, it's a perpendicular segment from a vertex, so line containing the side opposite. The reason why they had to include this part, line containing the side, is because some triangles, particularly obtuse triangles, when we go to draw that perpendicular, it actually goes outside of the triangle. And so then it wouldn't be hitting the side, but rather if we were to extend the side. Now again, we're going to look at these situations more so in a couple classes. Um, but this is the basic of what those items are. But I'm going to talk about mid-segment in just a moment. So um, these terms here, circumcenter, in-center, centroid, and orthocenter, we're going to talk about those next class. But basically what we have is that now that I know these four terms, when I look at each of them within a triangle, so if I look at perpendicular bisector in a triangle, perpendicular bisector bisects a segment. How many sides of a triangle are there? Three. Three. Thank you. And so if I were to draw the perpendicular bisector on every single side, how many perpendicular bisectors would I have? Three. So the circumcenter is simply where all those perpendicular bisectors would meet if I were to draw all those. Again, that's something we're going to learn in a couple classes. In center, if I were to draw on all my angle bisectors, again, we'd have three because there's three angles. Where they meet is called the in center. Median. If I were to draw all three medians, where they meet, is called the centroid. And altitude, if I were to draw all three altitudes, where they meet, is called the orthocenter. So in two classes, we're going to talk about those terms more so and the theorems that go with it. Okay, now that I know what an orthocenter is, what attribute does it have? Now that I know what a centroid is, what attribute does it have? So that vocab is really important that you know what it is in the first place. In the next class, we'll talk about the theorems what characteristics do they have? So just like you had to know your special angles, you needed to know what corresponding angles were, you needed to know what alternate interior angles were, we then learned theorems and postulates about those and their characteristics. Same idea here. Some new vocab of terms of um, these points of intersection. And then in next class, we're going to talk about the theorems with it. All right. Mid-segment simply joins the midpoints. Again, I have three different sides, so I have three different midpoints. So if I were to draw all of my mid-segments here, Let's see if I can guess where this part is going to draw today. 
if I were to draw all my mid segments of connecting these midpoints, we could have these connected and those. There would once again be three mid segments. These are not going to all meet at one point, so it doesn't have a particular attribute of a point of concurrency. Um, but there is a theorem about that, which we'll be learning today. Great. Um, I probably should have also mentioned at the very top, concurrent lines just means that the lines all intersect at one point. And where they meet is that point of concurrency. So the intersection is the point of concurrency. Um, any questions with our vocab here? Okay. One more thing that I want to address is this little statement here. So it says the distance from a point to a line is the length of the perpendicular segment for the point to the line, which is the shortest distance. So when I'm talking about going from a point to a line, so let's say I'm the point and the back wall is our line there. When I'm talking about my distance from me to the wall, I'm not going to go weaving through the classroom to get my distance. I'm going to go straight to the wall, which is the shortest distance, which is the perpendicular distance. So anytime I have a line, line segment, a point, the, when I say the distance from the point to the line, I'm talking about that perpendicular distance, that perpendicular distance, which is the shortest distance. Okay. So what we have for today, again, is two very beginning theorems, the perpendicular bisector theorem and the angle bisector theorem. And then we're also going to learn about the mid-segment theorem. But we're actually going to start off with that first. So I'm handing out notes to you, but I want you to flip it over to the back side on the bottom. That's where we're going to start. Does that make sense? Is there anyone that did not get the notes? Okay. Now, before we start into that, I'm going to have you, just to help solidify that we do know what these terms are. Yes, Karen? Good work. There's always got to be one. Would you like a new one? Yes, please. Okay. So, um, to help solidify that we do know what these terms are, I'm going to have you with your shoulder partner. I'm going to project up a picture. I'm going to have you with your shoulder partner identify which which. No, no, you can. Yeah, we're just working on do we know what we're, what we're talking about here. Is this the one that I want? Mm -hmm. Sorry, I pulled up the wrong one. Hold on. All right, so we have this picture here, and they give you this information. So what I would like for you to do with your shoulder partner is identify which of these segments is a perpendicular bisector, which segment is angular bisector, which one's medial, which one's altitude. Take a couple minutes with your shoulder partner. They give us this information here in blue. They give us this picture. I want you to identify which segments go in the green. I think the I I think it's B. I think it'd be B. I 
If you look at the top, you see where we get the angles are What's the meaning again? Uh, All right, let's go ahead and take a look. Oh, the altitude is easy. The altitude is easy. Yeah. All right, go ahead and bring it back up front, then you put it away. The next one I see I'm taking. All right, um, so just a reminder, this unit is very heavy with vocab, and it's very important you know which term switch, which point of concurrency goes with which, and which attribute goes with which. So this is a good unit to do flashcards, because putting up, like, this could be something that you see on a quiz or a test, where you have to just straight up identify. If you just can't straight identify what the terms are, then there's no way you're going to be successful this unit. So good unit to use flashcards with. Okay, perpendicular bisector. Which segment is our perpendicular bisector? Yeah. GF. Give me a thumbs up if you agree with that. Thumbs down if you disagree. Okay, we needed, we only have really two options because we need it to be perpendicular. And they told us that AF and FC, that these guys are working hard. Good, so we know that that's going to be, what would we call point F? Midpoint. Okay, angle bisector. What do we think for angle bisector? Mikhail, is that a hand raised? Okay, what do you think? Line B. BE. Give me thumbs up if you agree with segment BE. Thumbs down if you disagree. Seemingly thumbs up. All right. Can you so explain? angle bisector. Let's take a look at the information they gave us for our angle. So we have ABE. ABE. Oh, come on. This is my word. I just learned it here. All right, so we've got this angle and this angle are congruent. So angle bisector is the one that cuts it in half. So we want this guy, which is indeed BE. It's probably helpful, too, to see that um, BE is on the in there. Okay, questions so far. Firm nuclear and angle bisector. Awesome. All right, median. What do you guys think of median? Go ahead. BF. Are you, or sorry, thumbs up if you agree, thumbs up if you disagree. Awesome. So again, median is vertex and midpoint opposite, which is that. Good. And then our altitude. Go ahead, Nikki. BD. So again, vertex and perpendicular, the opposite side. Now, like I said, for some triangles, um, you might have that your perpendicular bisector does also bisect the angle. Um, so it is possible for some triangles that you might have the same segment for um, more than one of these. But for this particular triangle, they're all different. Okay, good. Questions with that? Okay. So take a look what you have in front of you. Let me drag our notes over. Nope, not that one. Not that one. So again, on your notes, come flip over to the back side, bottom part. We're going to start with that. Taking a look at our mid -city. You know, it's going to be good when your notes have this large of blank spaces, right? It's actually not as, I gave way more space than you did. All right, so our triangle mid-segment here. This is where we're going to start off with your notes for today. All right? Our triangle mid-segment theorem. It's, um, so it says the mid-segment is parallel to the third side and is half as long as the third side. So just refresh your memories, take a look at your vocab. 
The mid segment joins the midpoints of the two sides. So let's just go ahead and use this picture here. In order for us to be to know that this is the mid segment, then we need to either put markings on the picture like this, so you can go and draw those in, or they would tell you it's the mid segment, or they would tell you um, segment BA is congruent to segment AE, segment BC is congruent to segment CD. Um, but when we see that, we can know that A and C are midpoints. A is the midpoint of this side, C is the midpoint of this side. So when you connect those midpoints, we call that the mid segment. So it's just one of my mid segments. Big segment. So according to this theorem, that mid segment, according to the theorem, that mid segment is parallel. Third side. So segment AC is parallel to the third side, the side that's not connected. So it's parallel to ED. And it says that it's half as long as the third side. So the measure of AC is half the measure of ED. What's another way I could think of this? Instead of saying AC is half of ED. QAC equals ED. So we could think of it that way. Depending upon the information you're given, you might prefer to double your AC. Um, totally up to you. Let's multiply both sides by two. So let's say that AC is 20. How much would ED be? AC is 20. How much would ED be? 40. 40. I gave you, I tricked you. I gave you the mid segment, so our third side would be double. Okay. Um, so let's go take a look at this. Example one it says if AC is 5, what is ED? 10, oh, they gave us units. 10 what? Inches. Where does it see? Where? Oh, okay. Example two says measure of angle BCA is 65. Then the measure of angle CDE is what? 65. Now, how do we know that that's true? Good. Corresponding angles postulate. According to our theorem here, we have that these are parallel, and these two angles, BCA and angle D, those are corresponding angles by the corresponding angles postulate, then we know that those are going to be congruent, which I think is exactly what example three is saying. Whoops. Um, so A, sigma AC is parallel to sigma ED, therefore angle BAC, so we're looking at the other side now, is congruent to angle AED. Because more spinning is possible. What do you know? Previous units coming back for the win. What are we going to need to do as part of that? Are we going to need to like do the, like theorems and stuff? Are we going to need to, like, You know, this unit, I hate that I don't have proofs for you, but we don't have proofs for this unit. Don't worry, they'll come back full force next year. Uh, so, the most that I would ask you to do is like like something like that. How do we know? We might still use previous steps and justifications. Um, and I might ask you like where you say by a triangle that you thought we had that group. No, like What's that? No, like whole long page things. No. No groups. For this unit. Next unit, yes. The one after that, yes. The one after that, yes. Okay. Um, I want you guys to go and do example four. Go ahead and find X. Yeah, yeah, so one, two, three, four all go together. Wait, I take that back. Example four is its own. Sorry, don't use example one for example four. You're still using that same triangle, but not like example one. So use this equation here. So you are speaking of it. Yeah, well, we have to. Now it's a term. It gives us expression. So it's a term. 
All right, check your answer with your shoulder partner. I forgot to put that I forgot to put that before that. All right, is X greater than or less than 10? Greater. Is greater than or less than 50? Less. Good, what do we get? 30. What? No, it's 30. 30, right? That's it, sounds good. X equals 30. Now, again, it doesn't matter which setup you use, but they give us our expressions here, so we simply use the theorem apply. I'm going to go ahead and use just the original. So I have AC, which is 2x plus 5, equals 1 half of ED, which is 5x minus 20. Now you can distribute that 1 half. You get fractions. Everyone loves those. Or multiply both sides by two if you're not sure about it. Why don't we just let somebody start by having you both have my whole part? All right, there's a lot of talk, especially in the back quarter that should not be talking. Do we have questions on this? Okay. So, try to get take it there pretty easy. Probably should make a flashcard for that so you don't forget about it. Okay, let's go to the front side. Perpendicular bisector theorem. Now again, these other two theorems, uh, we're not yet talking about perpendicular bisectors in a triangle. Next class we'll talk about that. It's just for any perpendicular bisector. So keep in mind perpendicular bisector is perpendicular and it bisects the same. So perpendicular bisector theorem says, okay, I'm going to make sure I'm setting this off right here. Yes. If a point lies on the perpendicular bisector of a segment, the point lies on the perpendicular bisector bisector of a segment. The point lies on the perpendicular bisector of a segment. Then the point is equal distance. And the point is equal distance. From the endpoints of the same. And that's an A that formed with the A with the T that makes it look like an E with an extra leg. Just go with it. All right, then the point is equidistant from the endpoints of the same line. The point lies on the perpendicular bisector of a segment, then the point is equidistant from the endpoints of the same I can't write them straight line at all. So I usually do that too. Okay, so let's go and draw an example to illustrate this. So let's start off. Let's draw a segment. Let's call this segment AB. And then do your best to draw an approximate perpendicular bisector. <laughs> I think yesterday I oriented the board. Was it five times or seven times? <laughs> It changes every year what its issue is, so no, I don't know. It's better than, or last year it was better, but two years ago it was worse, so. I don't know if we count that as a win or not. 
Okay, um, so let's go ahead and make markings so that we know that this is perpendicular and bisecting. So bisecting. And perpendicular. Um, let's go ahead and call that point where it bisects it. I'm going to call it M for midpoint. I don't know that we really need it. Okay, so if a point lies on the perpendicular bisector of a sector, so we've got our perpendicular bisector shown up here. So you can draw your point anywhere on your perpendicular bisector. Above, below, close, far away. It's for any point on your perpendicular bisector. So draw a point on there, and let's just call that. Yeah, my favorite alphabet, A, B, and C. Exactly. Okay, so according to this theorem, this point that we just drew is equidistant from the endpoints. What does equidistant mean? Equal distance. Equal distance. Good, the same distance away. So if we go ahead and. Let's do this. I'm going to go red. My distance from here to here. Oh, okay. And here oh. to here are the same. Okay, now that looks like an angle measure thing. Right? <laughs> it does look like that. Should we draw them like dotted? Just whatever you so desire. And then that was a good idea. Okay, so our conclusion here is that these are the same. So the measure C A is equal to the measure C. Now as you can see this didn't make a triangle, um, but this is true for any point on there. So you can kind of imagine as you go closer and further away. It's even true for a down below. Now, the unfortunate thing with the county moving this unit earlier is that we haven't talked about congruent triangles yet. And technically, we could prove this by congruent triangles, but that's to come next unit. What we have happening here is that these triangles are congruent, which is how we know that it's equal to this. There's a perpendicular bisector on the bottom, and it makes a tri tri triangle like this. Would that mean that from AC to BC, bottom point, would those be congruent to each other? Like if I drew one down here? Yeah. Um, not necessarily because I can have my point anywhere on there. Uh -oh. So like from here to here would not be congruent to here to here. Okay. But I would still have that, if we call that D, A, D, and D, B would be congruent. These guys would be. Yeah. But it's not congruent to a different one up there. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. But if C and the other point were equal distance from Away each other, from, yes, then it would. Then it would, yeah. And we would have four. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, questions with that? Okay, now we're going to, for right now, ignore what's happening underneath where it says construction. And we're going to take a look at angle bisector theorem. So again, perpendicular bisector theorem, we've got perpendicular bisector. Any point on here is the same distance away from the end points of the segment. Angle bisector theorem. If a point lies on the angle bisector, the bisector of an angle, the bisector of an angle, if a point lies on the bisector of an angle, then the point is equidistant from the sides of the angle. The sides of the angle. If a point lies on the bisector of an angle, and the point is equidistant from the sides of the angle. Let's draw a picture for this. This is true no matter what type of angle we have, acute, obtuse, or right. 
Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and draw an angle and label it ABC. You can do the same. It's up to you whether you want to. I'm going to draw it from my computer. Um, it's up to you whether or not you want to make it acute or too serious. Technically, this should have arrows. Okay, I'm going to call this A, B, and C. And I'm putting A and C on here just simply so that I can label it. I'm not saying that they're the same distance away. Alright, and then again, do your best to draw an angle bisector. We'll put markings on our diagram to indicate that it is such. check that we've satisfied the hypothesis here. Um, so we've got a point line on the bisector angle. So we've got our angle, it's been bisected, so let's go and draw a point anywhere on it. Now an angle bisector, um, angle bisector we have this right here, so let's just use D. You can draw anywhere on it. I'm going to throw D out here. So here's a point on my angle bisector. According to this theorem, the point is equidistant from the sides of the angle. So notice here we're going from a point to a line, or a ray rather. So again, the, when we talk about the distance from a point to a line, a line segment, or a ray, we always go to the shortest distance, which is the perpendicular distance. So you just want to draw straight from here to your sides. So I'm going to put that perpendicular just so you know I did do the shortest distance. So it says that the point is equidistant from the sides of the angle. So then what I have is that this is congruent to this. Alright, let me go ahead and clean up my picture a little bit from the computer. Now that perpendicular there is um, not saying that it's a perpendicular bisector. We can't bisect it, right? Um, it's just simply let me know that I did the shortest distance there. This is supposed to be right angle and the other one. Um, just to make it easier for us to label what's happening, I'm going to call this point here X and this point Y so that I can actually write out XD or DX. Um, <laughs> is congruent to y. So something that um, students mess up every year is that they say the point is equidistant from the ends of the angle. Where are the ends of my angle? What's that? They're just as one. Thank you so much, Casey. There, there is no end to my angle. The rays go on for forever. So that's how we're equidistant from the sides, not the ends of the angle. So the ends of the angle, wrong. So it's equidistant from the sides. But again, keep in mind that when we're talking about going from a point to a side, if you would, we're talking about the shortest distance, which is that perpendicular distance. Okay, questions with that? Yes, Did you, did you only do XD and YD because you didn't like AD and DC? A, B, and D, C. A, D. Um, a and C, I don't know are the same distance. Right? Like, I don't know that D to A is actually perpendicular. So I was just drawing my perpendicular distance. A and C are simply there to label the angle. I could have taken that that guy and like, thrown it way around here and have A up there. Yes, please. Yes, because we're talking about, whenever we're talking about the distance, 
So equal distance, the same distance. Whenever we're talking about distance from a point to a side, it's always going to be the perpendicular distance. That's what we're talking about with our vocab, the very top part there. The distance from a point to a line or a side is always going to be the perpendicular distance. If I walk... So you can't draw a rainbow line on both sides and say that they're equal? Right. It's always going to be perpendicular. It's like if I say that... So going back to I want to walk like my distance to the wall. I don't go this way to the wall. I want to talk about my distance is straight back to the wall, perpendicular to it. So just because you see perpendicular doesn't mean that you're doing perpendicular bisector. Take a look at your picture is actually showing you. It might be that it's the angle bisector here. They're just showing you that this is the shortest distance. So question. Other questions with this? Okay. Um, so we're going to do constructions with this in just a moment. Um, well, let's go to the constructions. So what constructions are, so in geometry, um, we can prove pretty much the entire course of geometry using a compass and a straight edge. Now, a straight edge is not a sand ruler, but rather just a straight edge. Um, but the straight edges we have are rulers. But the idea is that you can construct, which means draw it with a compass and a straight edge without using the measurements on it. Um, in our high school geometry class, we do a very small portion of constructions compared to just how much you can do. Like I said, there's proof by construction. Um, and I remember in my geometry class I had taken in college, we did some pretty intense constructions. But so for the S well, there's basically nine basic constructions that they'll ask you about. Um, so these are our first two that we're going to talk about. We have the angle bisector construction and a perpendicular bisector construction. We're going to look at that today because we can then, once we've bisected on a perpendicular bisector, we can then take a look at our theorem and application to it. So constructions are something that we do kind of throughout the year, and we do it a lot in Stinger just to keep practicing it so that when you come to the SOL, you're like, oh, yeah, it's easy peasy. You just go, rent, 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 connect. So um, we're going to go ahead and do these two constructions, which means everyone needs a compass and ruler. Do not leave yet. Let's talk about these compasses. These are not the silly, nilly, middle school, elementary school compasses. These are awesome compasses. With that means they have a very pointy spot. Please do not injure yourself. Please do not bleed. Please do not make someone else bleed. Please do not make me send you to the clinic or give you a detention because you're being reckless. Be careful. Even be careful just when you go to grab one because they're all just pointing every which way. So don't get stabbed. Okay, um, so these compasses are actually really nice. The other compasses that you could probably use, did I keep an example? Are ones that would always slide or move. If you've ever used a compass before. Although these are nice, when you go to draw them, it just moves on you, and then your circle looks like. So these are actually really nice compasses because it allows you to tighten it down so that it doesn't shift on you. So basically what you'll have in this, the compasses over there is you'll have this circle, and it already comes with the black pointy scary thing in there. You can loosen this so it's easier to um, adjust it and put your pencil in. So you're going to want to put your pencil in. Ideally, get your pencil and the tip of the black one as close as possible. It's not a big deal. If they're not close, it just works better that way. You can tighten a little bit so that it doesn't fall out. And then you, as we do our construction, we will be adjusting the width of it. Um, and so when you get the width that you need, you just tighten it more and it doesn't move on you if you don't apply a lot of pressure while you use it. Um, most, so most pencils should be in here. Some mechanical pencils fit. They're some of the bulky ones. I'm trying to see if anyone has a bulky one. Won't yeah. fit. Yeah, like those ones are not going to fit. So if you... Hey, a couple pe someone left behind a couple pencils there today. I do have two pencils you can borrow. I would highly recommend that you put a pencil in, not a pen, because it's very possible you might make mistakes. And a construction looks really messy if you have scribbles all over it. So we, I'm going to very slowly go through the instructions for a construction. Instructions for a construction? Yeah, together. Um, but do make sure you're paying attention because it's really frustrating to have to repeat the same instruction 15 times. So I will go slowly 
If you're confused, if you're stuck, if you're like, I don't know what you're talking about, raise your hand so we can all make sure we're on the same page. Um, but we will be doing constructions quite a bit throughout the year. I like constructions, they're fun. So very carefully, I'm going to dismiss you row by row to very carefully grab a compass and a straight edge. We'll go to with the we'll go to the first two rows that are closest. Yeah. I found them on the floor, so I'm assuming they were. Once you get your compass, go ahead and get it kind of set up. Listen up. Feel free to, on the back of your assignment sheet, kind of draw some circles or whatnot with it just so you kind of get a feel for things. That's the fun part. All right, next two rows can go ahead and grab a compass and a ruler. All right, a couple of things with your compass. It's better to have more length on the drawing end than on your eraser end because that allows you to have more space to draw whereas if i was trying to do like a circle with this guy here then it's not so easy so you want to have more more length on your drawing end also too um i should have mentioned this before you want to make sure um so i had some people where they started off by putting the pencil and the black one the same way on the same side. You want to first make sure that they're on opposite sides before you have them point the same way. Right, so they should be on opposite sides when you set it up. And again, it doesn't have to be exactly the same length. It works if it's not. It's just easier if they're about the same length. Um, I gave away my last one. I've only got a clear pencil, which does not erase well. Ask, ask those around you. I'm sorry. No one re I shouldn't say no one. People have not been returning my pencils to me in the last I did not That is a beautiful circle. I do not read it. So guys, if you do not have a pencil that um, works into the compass, ask those around you for a, a pencil. So people are just practicing yep. drawing circles on whatever paper. <laughs> this is our class. You can do it in your What? What did he say? That's a problem. You're welcome. I need a screenshot. Oh, rolling. There's one on the back and there's one right All right, guys. Listen up, please. What? Um, so, a couple of things as you do constructions. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have chalkboards anymore, so I can't use this. But as you do constructions, it's typically better to put pressure not on the pencil, but rather on the black pointy end that's going to be holding your place. That's what I did. I Oh, yeah. Ha, ha, ha. There's something else. Oh, Casey, that is... That is... Casey, can I see? Miss Whoa, you're so big! Well, it is a compass. It's a t-shirt. Very nice. Very nice. Wait, do you hold it like this? Um, I usually hold it kind of that's another good question, Mitchell asked. Um, I usually will hold the compass close to the paper and not like up top because then you start to move the wrong end. So I typically will hold, put pressure on the black and then kind of turn around. Wait, how do I not take this? You know, Aiden, I'm not sure that I can give. I, I, I don't know, I just feel like it might be with this girl that there's just always going to be Wait, why are you doing this? Because we're not just doing circles. Actually, we're not doing circles at all today. You're just getting the hang of the compass for circles. No, I'm about to have you actually do stuff. Okay, 
So now we should be familiar with the compass. Everyone should have compass equipped with pencil. Again, if you don't have one, ask those around you. Be nice. Share. And let's go ahead, everyone, go to construction number one, perpendicular bisectors. <laughs> All right. Again, make sure you are listening and paying attention so I do not have to repeat a million times and so it does not take a million minutes. So the instructions are already there, but I'm going to walk through it with you. So we are basically going to construct a perpendicular bisector. This is one of the tasks for SOL. So the first thing is we're going to draw a line segment and label it AB. On the SOL, they would give you a segment probably already. Um, so I'm going to go ahead. Uh, so with constructions, um, you want to keep in mind that it needs to fit on the paper you have. So you don't want to go too large with it. But you don't want to go too small. The larger, the more accurate it's, you're more likely to be. So don't go real tiny. Um, go kind of a medium distance. I would recommend that your segment is, I don't know, three-ish inches around there. Um, totally up to you. You don't have to have it any particular orientation, but you do want to kind of put it in the middle space again so you can draw around it. So, guys, you're literally using your straight edge. Oh. Right. So, right. So, right now, we're not using the compass. You're just going to use your ruler to put a segment. And it doesn't have to be three inches. I'm just giving you an idea of about what will fit with the page space given to you. No, the orientation does not matter. What well, does matter is that you actually use your straight edge and don't just freehand it, John Michael. Are you freehanding? Okay, I just didn't see the ruler and I got worried. You're gonna use. You're just gonna use your ruler. Just lay down your ruler. You're not using. You're not doing it. It comes in. You're literally just put down your ruler and make it safe. What time are you doing? Sideways there. All right. Label your segment A B. Do you want to put other points on the end? Yes. Points? Okay. Yeah. 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 It's a segment. Do you want to put in the other points on the end? You can if you want, if, if you prefer. Oh, that's so much more than All right. So now we're going to construct the perpendicular bisector of the segment. Again, the instructions are there in that in this parentheses, but I'm going to illustrate it for you. Um, the orientation does not matter, but a line should be straight, otherwise it's not a line. But yes, orientation doesn't matter. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is you're going to now take your compass, and you're going to slightly loosen it so that you can adjust the width, and you want to set it so that it's more than half the length of your segment here. So up here on the smart board, I'm taking my compass and I'm scooting it so it's more than half the length. You're not going to draw anything yet, you're just going to scoot it so it's more than half the length. Two inches, though. Sure. Doesn't have to be exact measurements. Again, constructions require absolutely no measuring whatsoever. Yeah. Yeah, guys, once you go more than half, tighten it so it won't move on you. Okay, so the reason why we have to have it more than half is because we're going to draw arcs and we need them to intersect. If you go half or less, then it's not going to intersect enough. So that's why we go more than half. So what we do is you're going to take the pointy black end and put that on point A. Now we're going to draw an arc above your segment and below. You don't need to connect it now. 
So again, above and below. Yeah, it looks cleaner if you do. It's not really big deal. Keep your compass the same. Do not change it after you've done your arcs. If you accidentally loosen it, the beautiful thing is you can take your compass and put it back to it and then take it. So we should have an arc above and an arc below. Did you draw an entire circle around it, Aiden? Yeah. Arc above, arc below. Yes, John. Yeah, you can take it off. Yes, arc above, arc below. Okay. It looks messier. Oh, gee, it matches your hand right. <laughs> All right, so now that we have an arc above and an arc below, we keep our compass the exact same width. And I'm now going to repeat this process, but put the black end on point B. We're going to repeat this process so that we get that intersection. The intersection is what we're hoping for. So you only need to draw enough so that it intersects. If you find that you didn't quite go far enough on your arc originally, you can go back, put it on A, and extend out your arc as needed. But we just simply need to draw the arc above and below so that it intersects twice. Oh, and then we. Oh, there you go. Oh, yeah. That's what I thought. I missed my. Wait, this is what we do for the rest of the year because this is like the only map unit I've had this much fun. No. So it's our gap. This is actually really cool. If you think with it, it's actually when you connect with it. It's like, we're like, we're like, we're like, we're like, we're like, <laughs> All right, so everyone should have intersecting arcs above and below. I want everyone to hold up their papers so I can see your intersecting arcs above and below. Luke, can I see yours? <laughs> oh, you didn't follow directions. So erase and start over. Let me guess, you did it in pen. Yeah, but I want you to do this. Samantha, you're still working. Okay. Roland, you turned it away from me right as I was looking. Roland, let me see your circles. Great, do you have your suit on the Good. Aiden, did you finish six yours yet? Did you do yours? Good. Okay. Okay. Samantha, did you get yours? Okay, but you need to be able to do it yourself, though. <laughs> eventually, you will be tested on this. Not now, but eventually. Okay, so all we've done is simply set our compass more than half, arc above, below, repeat. Okay, now all we need to do is take our straight edge and connect those intersections. Draw that line. Make sure you draw so it goes through those intersections. Draw the guy there. I'm going to use a line because I can't. Yeah. Get it as, get it as close. <laughs> I did a dotted one. Is that okay? Um, go ahead and make it solid. Because it's that is the perpendicular bisector. Like, that's our final thing. Alright, connect those. Make sure it goes through the intersections. What you have just constructed is your perpendicular bisector. So, let's go ahead and make markings so that we know it's a perpendicular bisector. Which means I need it to be perpendicular and bisected. So pretty basic. Again, all we're doing is we simply take our compass more than half. So we go, burp, burp, burp. 
Go side. Connect. Uh, no, you will eventually have this on a test, but it's not for a little while. I'll let you know when it's going to be on a test. We get a do on test. Okay. So we should all have perpendicular bisectors. Now that we've done a perpendicular bisector, now we're going to go and take it a step further and just investigate our theorem. So again, our theorem said any point on here is equidistant from the endpoints of the circle. Oh, okay. So underneath, you'll see instructions about that. So now you get to just choose a point anywhere on your perpendicular bisector. Let's call it C. Can we go below? Anywhere on your perpendicular bisector, draw a point and label it C. Yes. Did you do it for an angle bisector? So you're just going to make yourself know that that's construction one. Okay. So according to our theorem, this distance from C to B and C to A should be the same. Now keep in mind, believe it or not, you are all human. So there is always an element of human error. But with this type of construction, we should be pretty close to the correct measurement. So I want you to go ahead and measure CB, CA, and see how close you got to them being the same. They were exactly close. Right? Okay, and you're good. Oh, right. you're good. Uh, I have two inches. I got, uh, I got two inches. Can I draw a line between this? Uh, you were three eighths of an inch off. Can I draw a line between them? I got two inches. Very nice. What do you say? Gender lines between them. Yeah, yeah. Guys, you can go ahead. At this point, it's up to you how much more you want to add. But you can go ahead and actually draw those segments. Okay. If you want to draw them dotted so you know that that's what we're doing down here. That's oh, that's exact. Wait, what's the graph? Can you answer the bottom question? Yeah, go ahead and answer. Wait, you want dotted? I'm going to go dotted. I'm Pretty good. Alright, so again, this is just an illustration of our theorem. Once you satisfy that, go ahead and flip it over to the back side. We're going to do angle bisector. I went ahead just so that you know what it is you measured. That's fine. You can probably still fit it over there. It'll just go a little bit smaller than angle. Okay, so angle bisector. Pretty, again, so most of our constructions are usually about three steps. Our last one there, we just simply arc above, below, arc above, below, connect. No, because this is angle bisector. You don't know how to do angle bisector yet. So angle bisector, again, is only about three steps. So for our angle, um, so again, you're going to use your ruler to draw an angle, label ABC, up to you whether you want it acute, obtuse, or right. Put it kind of in the middle. Um, actually, we don't need middle. Put it, put it more toward the bottom of your space here. Right. No. Yeah, so just draw an angle label ABC. Um, this, it doesn't really matter as long as you have it kind of more toward the bottom. Because I didn't change So do they have to do the same? No. Guys, angles are made up of rays. They go for forever. It doesn't matter if you have the rays the same or not. All right, and again, let's go and label these A, B, and C. And again, these theorems um, apply to any kind of angle. Ow. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So once again, I have the instructions there in parentheses, but I will demonstrate it for you. So 
So what we what we're going to do. Ah! <laughs> All right, so what we're going to do, A and C are only there to label your angle. We do not use A and C in our construction. They are only there to label your angle. When you do this on a test, I will give you one that has A and C on there, and you should not use it for your construction. Some of you will use it for your construction. I will take out my personal compass that I bought off Amazon when I first started teaching. That's super awesome. And I'm going to check to see if you used A and C. I will know if you used A and C. Do not use them. They're only there to label your angle. What's that? Because it's got an extra gear so it is more precise and really won't move on you. It's made of metal. Okay. Butter? Yes. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take our compass. Can you boot up my friend? And once again, you've got some freedom here. We're going to set our compass just so that it intersects both rays. What? So you don't want to go so large that it doesn't even hit it. And you don't want to go so small that you have the tiniest of arcs. So just whatever. You so desire that it intersects both rays. So it's just gonna go. Should we draw a four? Uh, does it matter if it goes into the words? One line? It's okay if it goes into the words. So go ahead and draw the arc. <laughs> Technically, we really only need the intersection points, but that's okay. Okay. Now, you're going to just leave your compass the same. You can change it if you want, but it's not necessary. These spots where they intersected, you're now going to put the pointy black end on that. You know what? I'm going to make mine a little bigger. Let's go make your compass a little wider. Yeah. Bigger is better. All right. So again, put the pointy black end on the intersection, and you're just going to do a little arc up here. We're again aiming for some intersecting arcs. We just need one of them. And you can go same size. I went a little bit bigger just so that it was further up. So they intersect between the original arc and this guy. Do not need to intersect. Oh, okay, good. Oh, that's what we're trying to make So I'm putting the pointy black in yeah, on the intersection and then just doing a little bit of an arc. And then we draw the line. Yes. You might want to extend it out a little more. Go ahead, go a little further to the right. Okay, so now we're just going to simply do the same thing. I'm going to move my pointy black end to the other intersection. And I'm going to do the same process so that we get that intersection. Once again, you might have to go back and extend it out if you didn't go quite far enough. Looks right. You got it. Alright, so again, we have basically what we're doing is we did same distance, same distance, and this we now connect with B. That's why we only need one of them because we already had a point to connect it with. So this intersection. Connect that with B. That's your angle bisector. for this is pretty much a three-step process. Arc and cross, so it intersects. From those who go right, 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 and connect. 
Okay, go ahead and show me your angle bisectors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Guys, depending upon your compass width, your intersection point might have been down here. That's fine. Just as long as it intersects somewhere. This looks good. Thank you. Okay. Um, John Michael, I, I can't quite see because you have it so close to the light. Can you? Nah. Okay, I think I see it. I'm sorry, I just saw a bunch of circles and no angle bisector. Where are you still working? Wait. Okay. So this is our angle bisector. Now this next part, um, we haven't yet learned how to do perpendicular from a point not on the line. So we're not going to construct that distance. We're going to just approximately calculate it. But so let's go and read what it says. So our angle bisector theorem says I can put a point anywhere on here, and it'll be the same distance from the side. So we're not measuring from the point to A and C. We don't use A and C in our construction at all whatsoever. We're just going to measure the distance to the sides. All right. So it says choose a point and label it K. So go ahead and do that. I'm gonna go. Yeah, where do you go? Okay. So now again, the next piece we are technically not gonna do as we properly should because we don't have time for uh, doing the third construction day. But the theorem says that the perpendicular distance, which is our shortest distance, should be the same. So we're going to slightly fudge it. All right. Ideally, your straight edge is perpendicular, right? Is that a right angle? Um, so what I would like for you to do is line that up against your ray. So that way, instead of us having to construct perpendicular, you can use that to go perpendicular. Huh? Right. And then go ahead, once you've got it flush up against the side there, it's perpendicular, then go ahead and connect it. Um, I'm going to try and do that up here. I don't know if I can. So what? No. Guys, we're not connecting this to the, the arc here. We're just connecting to the sides wherever it happens to be perpendicular to. Oh. For right now, we're going to use this side here and just lay it up against your angle because this is perpendicular. And in the future, we're going to learn how to actually. Oh, I get it. <laughs> So I'm basically going to use my ruler here, the fact that it's perpendicular. Now mine's not perfect, and then I can connect that. Mine's going to be a little off, that's alright. Because my ruler is a right angle, so I know that that's going to be perpendicular. See how I put my ruler up against the side there. The ray. Just on the ray. And then connect it to point K. Again, in the future we will learn how to actually construct that. But today we're just focusing on two constructions. Okay, so according to our theorem, these distances should be the same. Again, keep in mind you are a human, believe it or not. So there's going to be a little bit of error. So go ahead and measure it to see how you did. Oh, that's how how exactly. Yeah, it's just just this is so slight. It's actually pretty easy for me to see. Okay. Wow. Okay. 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 Whoops, whoops. We're just going to go with it. Yeah. All right, now make sure you follow the directions. It says draw KJ, so it's perpendicular to BC, so let's label this guy J. We're going to go and put in that's perpendicular. And KL, 
So it's perpendicular to BA. Okay, well, so ah. So according to our theorem, if we measure KJ and KL, the distances should be the same. Again, keep in mind, we do have human error, so you're going to be slightly off. Okay. How'd, how'd we do? Oh, that one's a little more difficult, especially because we technically didn't do the proper perpendicular. Six, six feet square. Three eighths. Square. 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 Okay. So, again, these two constructions will keep practicing throughout the year, and we're going to be adding other constructions to it. But congratulations, you have successfully constructed a perpendicular bisector and angle bisector. You will now carefully remove your pencil and carefully return compasses and rulers over there. Thank you. L zero. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna make a couple changes here. L zero. No, L zero. Look at the difference. Okay, worksheet one. Let's go take a look at this first chunk here. First of all, I would like for you to change number one. It should say L N and M O. L N and M O. Okay. So let's go take a look. Let's say given us this diagram here. And it says, what is the relationship between saying L N and saying the M O? What is the relationship? They're perpendicular. What else? The same length. They bisect. So would you agree they're perpendicular bisectors of each other? Yes. We have it cut it in half, make it half. Okay. So perpendicular bisectors of each other. Okay. So again, our perpendicular bisector theorem says any point that lies on our perpendicular bisector is equal to from the sides. So from the sorry, from the endpoints. So number two says what is the value of x? Now, if I look, these two pieces have an expression for x. Here's my segment. And this is a perpendicular bisector, right? That's what we just said. So if this is a point on my perpendicular bisector, again, from there to the endpoints are the same. So because my perpendicular bisector theorem, I can state 5x equals 3x plus 1. L is a point on my perpendicular bisector, so it is equidistant from the endpoints. Alright, I'm just going to solve for 2, 3, and 4. It, you're finding the actual value of x, so like solve for x. It's going to be 2, 3, and 4, and double check with your solar partner. Yep. All right, what did we get for X for number two? And what was the measure of LN? 50. 50? L O? Okay, so that's an example of perpendicular bisecting theorem. Let's go down to number nine. So something about our perpendicular bisector theorem and our angle bisector theorem is that the converse is also true, so it does go both ways. So here, they did not tell me that my angle has been bisected, but let's take a look. I see my angle, I see a potential angle bisector. And our angle bisector theorem says if it's on the angle bisector, it's equidistant from the sides. So the converse is also true. If it's equidistant from the sides, then it must be on the angle bisector. So from here, we can conclude CA is indeed the angle bisector. So how, oh wait, nine. It's asking us how far A is away. Sorry, I answered 10. Okay, what's the answer to nine? How far is A from CD? 15. How far is it from CB? Okay, that was way too easy. That shouldn't even be a question. 10. How is CA related? CA is the angle bisector. 
means angle bisector. Okay, so now that we know it's the angle bisector, now we know that these are congruent. I want you to go ahead and find 11, 12, and 13. Yeah. How far is A from C? They told us it was 15. I mean, they told us it was 15. Oh. Alright, what do we get for X? 29, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, um, so X was 49. I'll let you guys try a look. Okay, so your homework is kind of weird. It's part of worksheet one and part of worksheet three. Your assignment sheet tells you which parts to do. So everyone should have now worksheet one and worksheet three. Your assignment sheet tells you which part to do. Yeah. Uh, week to do it. The assignment sheet tells you which parts to do. So look at your assignment sheet to know which parts to do, but you are doing some of worksheet one and some of worksheet three. We should have had the date You still you still need the other ones, the other red factors. Okay. Right, correct. So again, part of one, part of three, look at your assignment sheet to know which pieces. And you've got a good long way.